Hi, on this video you will see an example of the rate monophonic algorithm. This algorithm is used to schedule periodic tasks and it is based on priorities. This means that a higher priority process or task will preempt a lower priority process. So, if we have a process running and a second process with a higher priority arrives, then we will have to stop the first process in order to give the CPU time to the second process. Now, I will draw the Gantt chart to try to illustrate the execution of the following four processes with the rate monophonic algorithm. We see that we have the burst time for each of the four processes, and in this case they arrive at the same time. We also have the period for the four processes, which is how often these processes need to be executed. The first thing that we have to do is to check whether it is possible to schedule the processes so that all of them meet their deadlines. In order to do this, we have to consider the two equations shown in the white boxes. On this case, n is equal to 4, because we have 4 processes. If we plug 4 on the same equation, we have that number 0.7568. The second equation is related to the CPU utilization of each of the processes, and it's the ratio of the burst time of the process to the period of the process. We apply this equation to find the CPU utilization of each of the processes. So for example, for process 1, we have a burst time of 2 time units, and we divide that by the period, which is 10 in this case, for a total of 0.2. We repeat that process for the rest of the cases, process 2, 3, and 4. After that, we add together the four numbers to find a total CPU utilization of 0.7. Now, because 0.7 is less than 0.7568, which is the number that we found uh, previously, this means that we will never miss a deadline if the rate monophonic algorithm is applied. Now that we know that it is good to apply the rate monophonic algorithm for this example, we proceed to find the least common multiple, or LCM, of each of the periods. One technique to do this is to find the prime factors of each of the periods. So, for example, in the case of 30, we have that the prime factors are 2, 3, and 5. This means that 30 divided by 2 is 15, 15 divided by 3 is 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1. In the case of 15, we have 1 times 5 is 5, 5 times 3 is 15, and we do the same for the two other processes. We remember that the LCM is the commons and uncommons with the greatest exponent. This means that the LCM in this case is 30. Now, the GCD or greatest uh, common divisor is 5, and if we remember that is the commons, with the smallest exponent. This number is also going to be useful a little bit later. Now we're going to apply the algorithm. Recalling that the LCM is equal to 30 and the GCD is equal to 5, this means that we have to find the execution of the processes until the 30th time unit. This is from 0 to 30. After this period, whatever order we find, is going to repeat again from 30 to 60 and so on. I recommend you to draw first the moment when each process needs to be executed. We see that the process with a period of 5, which is P2, runs every 5 time units. And by the way, this is the process that repeats the most, and that's what the GCD told us. According to the table, the four processes arrive at the same time, so we put P1, P2, P3, and P4 on time 0. The next one will be P2 again, because as we said, it runs every 5 time units, so we put it on 5. Then, on 10, P1 comes one more time, and P2 repeats again. On 15, P4 comes in, and P2 as well. For 20, we have P2 and P1. We always check on the table in the column of periods. On 25, P2 again, and finally, on 30, all the processes need the CPU at the same time, 
So we put P1, P2, P3, and P4 one more time. We also said at the beginning that the algorithm is based on priorities. The priorities are based on the period of the processes. A process with a smaller period has a higher priority. According to this, P2 is the process with the highest priority. So it runs first. It only has a burst time of 1, so we put it from 0 to 1. The process that follows will be P1 because it has a period of 10. It consumes two time units, as we see on the table, so it goes from 1 to 3. Then P4 with a period of 15 and a burst time of 2 takes from 3 to 5. Up to this point, we have P1, P2, and P4. We are still missing P3, but here one thing happens, and is that P2 comes again, as we see here. And because it has a higher priority than P3, we have to execute it first. So P2 goes from 5 to 6. Now we can give CPU time to P3, because it is the only one remaining so far. It goes from 6 to 10. But why up to 10 and not 11? Because on time 10, P2 comes one more time, and it has a higher priority than P3, so we drive from 10 to 11. We are done with P2 once again. And now we run P1 because its period is less than P3, which is still pending. P1 consumes two time units from 11 to 13. Now we can execute the remaining of P3, which is one more time unit. We previously executed four time units and we had one left. Now the CPU will be idle because we are done with the processes in the queue so far. On time 15 we have P2 and P4. Which one goes first? P2, because it has a smaller period. Then P4 from 16 to 18. After that, the CPU does nothing for two time units. On time 20, we have P2 and P1. P2 has a higher priority, so it goes first, and then P1 from 21 to 23. Then the CPU will be idle for two time units. And finally, on time 25, P2 runs again. On time 30, this sequence will repeat again up to time 60, then from 60 to 90, and so on. Finally, we're done scheduling these four processes. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.